For as much as my dog loves For as much as my That should be the call to open. Yo, it's Ivor. The eagle-eyed observer will note that I am outside and on a trail, but not on a bike. Let's talk about it. I say all the time that I'm a husband and a dad before I'm anything cycling. And with that comes a lot of responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is getting this guy out for his daily walk. I'm not a professional cyclist, and if you're watching this, odds are you probably aren't either. So I can't just spend all of my time training and resting. I've got stuff to do. So I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at what my training week looks like, or rather, what my week looks like and how I incorporate my training into it. And apropos of the responsibilities I was just talking about, I just got a phone call that I really had to take and it completely derailed my train of thought. Where were we? Oh right, scheduling, training, family obligations, work stuff, that's right. Normally I try to fit my bike workouts in as early as possible, but today I had some early meetings and work that was time sensitive that I really needed to get done. But I did have time to walk the dog, so I figured I'd get that out of the way, get back, get to the rest of my meetings, do some more work, and try to get my bike workout in over lunch. All right, just wrapping up the walk right now. Time to get inside, knock out some work, take care of those meetings, and then uh, see what we can do for the rest of the day. But first, more coffee. All right, coffee in hand. Let's get to my work from home office. Yeah, that's not ideal. Working from the sofa isn't ideal in terms of ergonomics or much of anything for that matter. This work from home scenario has presented a lot of challenges. One of them is finding a space where I can actually get my work done. To that end, we've ordered a desk. It's going to get here next week, finally. Uh, at that point, I'll actually be able to set up my office over there. You'll notice that there were some holes in the wall and drywall all over the place. There's some unfinished drywall here. We did some remodeling. We have a painter coming in. So hopefully between the paint and the desk and rearranging the furniture, this place starts to feel a little bit more like a place where we can be together as a family and where I can have a separate place to do my work that I need to do. Morning meetings are over, got some work off my plate, got some stressful stuff taken care of, and now it's time to hit my first workout of the day, which is my gym workout. Today we've got upper body, we've got bench press, pull-ups, lat raises, renegade rows, and we'll do some planks and some other ab work just to really <clears throat> nail down that core. It's something I think a lot of cyclists neglect uh, because you pedal with your legs, not with your arms. I have to worry about more than just my health and fitness on a bike, I need to prepare myself for life and raising kids and all of the things that I do off of the bike. That said, this stuff helps too. All right, five sets of bench done. Next on the menu is some chin-ups. So you might be wondering, hey Ivor, how do chin-ups help me on a bike? And the answer to that is, they don't necessarily, but they do work your arms and your back, both of which you use just getting through life. Hey, down here. The next on the list is Renegade Rows. These work more on your back and biceps, but they also work on core stability because while you're doing the exercise and pulling the weights up, as you'll see in a minute, you're also engaging your core to help you stop from rotating. So here, check it out. It's worth noting that these can be adapted to your strength level. So if you don't quite have the core strength necessary to do these, you can always do them from your knees as a slightly easier modified version. Or if you are a lot stronger than me, which I would bet most of you are, you can also add a push-up in between each rep. And the last thing I've got on the menu for today's gym workout is the plank. And if you're looking for an exercise to shred your abs and give you that six pack, this probably isn't it. But that's not why I do these. I do these because they work 
your core. So your lower back muscles, which are the ones that are currently under load, and they also help work on toughness. So a lot of cycling is just how much pain can you deal with? How much can you tolerate being uncomfortable? And I assure you that these are uncomfortable. And uh, being able to tolerate these for minutes at a time, for me, I feel like has gone a long way into being able to tolerate the pain in my legs on a long climb or even just on a short, punchy effort, just continuing to deal with that lactate buildup and that high level of discomfort. Man, um, yeah, these work. Oh. I've gotta get back to the day job for a bit, but first I need to get some nutrition in. So I'm gonna have a protein shake. It's got 18 grams of protein and 54 grams of carbs, total of about 300 calories. And best of all, it tastes amazing. Lest you think I'm not fueling my workouts, I am eating a vegan burrito bowl that I made. It's got hominy, black beans, uh, mushrooms, bell peppers, and some air fried golden potatoes. Pretty good, pretty filling, um, pretty carbohydrate dense. Uh, I made this yesterday. One of the things that I often do is I will cook in bulk, make enough for my family for that day, plus at least lunch the next day. And sometimes I'll make two or three meals at a time in the kitchen because it doesn't take me much longer to do that. It doesn't take me the same amount of time to make one meal three times as it does to make three meals once, if that makes any sense. So <clears throat> I will prep ahead of time and then store things in the fridge. Sure, maybe the meals aren't as good the day after, but they're still really good. They're still homemade. And I'm willing to take that minor trade-off in flavor for the massive convenience of having my meals already made. All right, almost time for the bike workout. Last thing I need to do is get my nutrition in order and we're gonna be using Flow at 60 grams of carbs per bottle. All right, finally made it outside. Today we have a 90 minute ride. It is endurance pace, but every 10 minutes, I've got a 45 second seated acceleration. It doesn't sound like much, but those accelerations hurt. 45 seconds is a long time when your legs are filled with lactate. <sighs> all right, we're back. I am pretty beat. Good thing all I have left to do today is go to my kid's soccer practice, come home, make dinner, and then do a couple more hours of work. <sighs> All right, finally home for the evening. It is entirely too late and I'm entirely too tired to make dinner. Fortunately, I've still got leftovers of the uh, taco-y fajita stuff. The kids have some leftover pizza and mac and cheese that I made yesterday. Yes. We'll be okay. All right, all caught up in work. Kids are in bed. My ride's done, my lifting is done. Apparently I'm still playing with a dog. This has been a bit of a recovery week for me. The only real intensity I've had was seated accelerations on Tuesday and then again today. I've got a day off tomorrow and then I've just got opener Saturday and the Oakland GP crit on Sunday. For as much as my dog loves the fetch, he is terrible at it. Where were we? Right. Typical training week for me usually has two days of intensity, maybe three days of intensity. Mondays I take completely off. Fridays are usually either off or a recovery day. Longer rides in the weekend. Again, this is what you get. Um, making do with what you have. And right now I have it set up where the dog can very easily knock over my lights. So I'm holding one. This guy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into a typical day for me in terms of balancing my job, my family, my riding, lifting, and everything in between. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're staying happy and healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.